Now when he had this great success, that he was at such a high position in Egypt, and at the same time his father had been brought, his mother was there, his brothers were there, and everything was fine, his life was happy, everything was okay, what does he pray for? What does he say? He says, Rabbi, O my Lord, Qad Ataitani. In fact, you have given me. You have given me. Min al mulki of sovereignty. Meaning the sovereignty that I have today in Egypt, you gave it to me. I could never have gained it myself. I was in Kanaan, a village, all the way in Asham. And here, finance minister of Egypt, I could never have become that. You gave me this position. You gave me this authority. You gave me this blessing. It's your ihsan. Look at the humility of Yusuf alayhi salam. That he attributes his success to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to his patience. Not to his good akhlaq. Not to his open-mindedness. Not to his ability and his skill. No. He says, Allah, you have given me this kingdom. وَعَلَّمْتَنِي And you have taught me مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ Of the interpretation of statements, of events, of dreams. And remember the meaning of ahadith? It's not just dreams. It's events. It's knowledge. It's to have farsightedness, insight. You gave me this knowledge. So we see that he mentions both worldly blessings as well as religious blessings over here. That, oh Allah, you are the one who gave these blessings to me. And you are the one who has made me successful. Why does he mention the knowledge of the Wilul Ahadith in particular? Because it was this ability, it was this knowledge that made him successful. It was because of this knowledge that he was able to come out of the prison when he interpreted the dreams of the two inmates and then finally the dream of king, that is what became a means of his success. But again, he attributes this to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You are the originator of the heavens and the earth. Or we can also understand فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ as يَا فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ O originator of the heavens and the earth. أَنْتَ وَلِيِّي You are my guardian فِي الدُّنْيَا in this world. You are my protector. You are the one who wants the best for me. You have been my protector throughout all those years when I had been left, when I had been thrown into the well, when I had been removed away from my father, when I was alone in Egypt, when I was living like a slave, when I was sent to the prison, who was my wali? You were my wali. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhirah. You are my wali in this dunya and also in the hereafter. Tawaffani musliman. Raise me as a Muslim. Look at his wish. Look at his dua. That when you make me die, make me die as a Muslim. As one who submits to you. One who submits to your decree. One who submits to your will, to your commands. Because sometimes it is easier to remember Allah in hardship. But it's difficult to remember Allah in ease. And Yusuf was now living in ease, in comfort. His family was there. He had become very wealthy. He had a very high position. So what is his worry? His iman. Tawaffani musliman. Give me death in a state that I am a Muslim. وَأَلْحِقْنِي And you join me with who? بِالصَّالِحِينَ With the righteous. Give me the company of the righteous. Because the company of the righteous is the most valuable treasure. The most valuable blessing. Yusuf ﷺ had gone through everything. He had seen everything. You can say, been there, done that. He had gone through everything. But what was it that was really valuable before him? The company of the righteous. Because he was very young when he was taken out of that company. And he missed it. He wished for it. He longed for it. 
He was greedy for it. He was thirsty for it. And finally when he meets his father, he knows that very little time is left. His father had become old. He knew that he had also become an adult. How long will you live in this world? So what's his wish? That when you give me death, give me the company of the righteous in the hereafter. The company of my forefathers. The company of the salihin. Alhiqni bisalihin. We see that Yusuf salam he was given so much at this point that none of us could attain. A high position, a happy family, great success, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, prophethood. But look at his humility. And look at the way how he acknowledges the favor of Allah. Whatever he had, the beauty, authority, family, freedom, happiness, none of us had that. But at this time when he has everything, what is he looking at? His akhirah. And who does he find great? Himself? No, he finds Allah great. I do not rely upon my knowledge. I do not rely upon my sovereignty. I rely upon you. Remember, there are very, very few people who have both authority and knowledge. Yusuf a.s. had both. But he recognizes the greatness of Allah, the majesty of Allah. And the one who feels Allah's greatness, he does not think of himself as great. And that is real servitude. That is real humility. He is so humble. He has the prestige. He has the authority. But he knows it's not forever. And his biggest desire is to die on Islam. He does not say, I am so smart. I've survived through so many difficulties. My iman has been safe. So up until death, my iman will be safe. No. He relies upon Allah. His biggest wish is to die as a Muslim. And he turns to Allah for that. That, oh Allah, you make me die as a Muslim. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that while dying, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was also raising his finger and he said three times, Allahumma fi rafiq al-a'la. That, oh Allah, I want the uppermost, the highest company in heaven. That is what I want. The company that is uppermost, that is highermost. Al-Rafiq al-A'la, the highest one. Meaning, the company of the righteous ones, according to one opinion. So we see the humility of Yusuf a.s. The focus of Yusuf a.s. He does not become proud. He does not become vengeful. He does not take revenge at all. He only increases in his humility. And this is a story of a person who is successful. This is a story of who? A person who is successful. If you look at the story generally, you think of a person who's gone through so many hardships. A person who's lived such a miserable life, such a sad life. But he doesn't look at his life like that. He doesn't feel pity for himself. He remembers the blessings. And he acknowledges the blessings of Allah. And he hopes. And he prays to Allah that you have given me this much, also make me die as a Muslim. Give me the company of the righteous in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ That is, مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْب It is of the news of the unseen. Meaning this story of Yusuf a.s. It is of the news of the unseen. نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكَ We reveal it to you. To who? To the Prophet ﷺ. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ And you were not with them. The Prophet ﷺ, you were not with them. With who? With the brothers of Yusuf ﷺ. إِذْ أَجْمَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَمْكُرُونَ When they had gathered up, when they had made a decision about their matter and while they were plotting. In other words, this story is from the unseen. And you did not know about it. There was no way that you could have learned about the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you about the story. And remember that this surah was revealed in the year of Al-Huzn. Amul huzn the year of grief. And in that year, the Prophet ﷺ suffered from two big losses. Very big losses. What were they? The loss of his wife, as well as the loss of his uncle. Who were 
the greatest supporters of the Prophet ﷺ. So this surah was revealed. This story was narrated to the Prophet ﷺ. Why? لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ so that we can strengthen your heart with it. So that the Prophet ﷺ also has confidence that ultimately the one who is patient and the one who fears Allah is the one who is successful. Allah will not waste his reward. Allah will grant him success. And in the story of Yusuf ﷺ were many lessons for the Prophet ﷺ and many lessons for us as well. We listen to the recitation of these ayat and we move on. So what lessons have you learned? What lesson have you learned from today's lesson in particular? That when you're going through a problem, it may seem as if there's no end to the tunnel, but hold on, be steadfast and wait for the end. Because Allah will not waste the reward of the one who is patient. Do not hold grudges. Forgive and forget. And also we learned that the more difficult and challenging the problem may seem, the more hope you should have. And all the children of Adam, they are khata'un. They make mistakes. And the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they are also who? Of the children of Adam, even they made mistakes. But the best of those who make mistakes are who? Those who repent. Those who change their ways. And we see that the brothers of Yusuf a.s. they changed their ways. They repented. And in that is a lesson for us. That sometimes we feel that we have been very unjust towards other people. That we have been unjust. We have deprived people of their rights. Sometimes we feel that only we are the ones who are suffering. But on the other side of the spectrum, we are the ones who are harming other people. So what's the way out? Realize your mistake. Admit your mistake. Seek forgiveness. Repent and move on. Another very important lesson that we learn is that in times of difficulty, turn towards Allah. Not complaining to people. Because if we complain to people, what's going to happen? People are going to become sick of us. They get bored of us. They don't want to listen to us. But if we turn to Allah, then at least in that there is reward. Dua is ibadah. It's worship. And also we learn that over here Yusuf salam says that أَنْتَ وَلِيِّي فِي الدُّنْيَا You are my wali in the dunya. And when a person has his yaqeen that Allah is taking care of me, then no matter what difficulty he is in, he is content. He is okay. Because he knows that Allah is there. He is my wali. He is taking care of my affairs. Being humble with all your achievements. That no matter what you have achieved, no matter what Allah has given you, staying humble. Having taqwa and patience are the way to success. He is respecting his parents, he's valuing them, he's giving them so much respect, what they deserve. And this is something that we all need to do as well. Because after the haqq of Allah, whose haqq comes? Parents. وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ Always after tawheed, what is mentioned? Worshipping Allah alone, then what is mentioned? Ihsan towards parents. Yes, in Surah Yunus we learned that this Qur'an is shifa'un lima fi sudur And this story is a big shifa. Another very important lesson that we learned is that if a person strives for the akhirah, that becomes his ultimate goal, then Allah will rectify his dunya for him. Allah will rectify his problems for him. He will take care of his affairs. Don't fear people. Because if Allah is going to protect you, people can never harm you. If Allah wants something for you, people can never take it away from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan for Yusuf a.s. He wanted to give him ta'wilul ahadis. He wanted to give him high position, authority. And the brothers, they wanted something completely different for him. The wife of Aziz, she sent him to jail. They could not take away from Yusuf a.s. what Allah wanted to give him. So don't fear people. And out of the fear of people, don't disobey Allah. Because if you disobey Allah, then what do you have left? And also we learn that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something away from us so that we are more grateful for it. That the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they did not value their brother at all. They did not value him. One bit even. 
but he was taken away from them. And they were made to go through so much. And eventually, they saw the value of Yusuf a.s. So sometimes blessings are taken away from us because of our ingratitude. And then we are made to see them and realize their worth. And again, it's a blessing if we are able to acknowledge that at that time. Exactly. But sometimes we have a whole plan for our lives. Hmm? That I'm going to get married at this point. I'm going to have these many children. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to do this and this and this. But sometimes Allah has a different plan for us. Completely different. So if things don't go as according to your plan, what should you do? Get frustrated? No. Know that Allah has a plan for me. And He is carrying out that plan. My job is to submit. When you make a plan, then remember that it's possible that Allah has a different plan and that Allah's plan is going to happen. Like when Yaqub salam he told the sons how to enter the city, he realized that Allah could have another plan. Exactly. That Yaqub salam he didn't give up hope, he didn't despair. So even when we are going through some difficulty, we cannot despair, we cannot give up hope. 